Hello, and welcome to the Executive Insights Podcast. I'm Brian Bohan. I lead the Consulting Partner Center of Excellence at AWS. And today I'm joined by Mahmoud al who is Managing Partner at IBM Consulting and leads the AWS Alliance there as well. Mahmoud, thanks for joining me today. Really excited to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So if you could tell us a little bit about what you do at IBM Consulting, your role, your responsibilities. Yeah, so uh, I run our AWS business globally, and really it's been one of our uh, our fastest growing business overall with one of our partnerships. Um, you know, now we're over 25,000 certified people just on AWS and the number of competencies, the number of joint client stories we've published, everything. It's really been a rocket ship over the past couple of years. So it's been really cool to be a part of. So the first thing I wanted to touch on is uh, generative AI, right? And we, we think, and we've talked about this before, really has the potential and the power to truly transform business processes, applications, end-to-end -end businesses in their entirety. Really interested what you're seeing with IBM Consulting, both in terms of how it's changing the practice and how you know the organization itself is interacting with clients, and then what are you doing with your clients with, with Gen AI? With Gen AI specifically, and I actually key off a little bit of something that, you know, I, I heard Werner Vogels in Tokyo, uh, you know, months ago um, during that summit. And he said, it's going to get to a point where Gen AI is a technology, just like any other technology, right? So we don't talk about the technology behind a microwave oven, we heat our food, right? We don't talk about the, you know, technology behind the fiber optic cables, we just use the internet, right? So for us, what we're seeing is that um, instead of it being more about digital everywhere, it's about Gen AI, you yeah. know, now, right? And when it comes to a consultancy, I think the biggest thing that we've seen is that it's not about Gen AI replacing an individual, it's about supplementing yep. the individual and making them that much more productive to be able to execute. So that's really where we've focused on on a business, which is if you're trying to scale your business and trying to take on these gnarlier and gnarlier transformations for your clients, how do you enable your practitioners and your entire organization to be able to execute with Gen AI? You introduce these, you know, assistants to make them that much more productive to be able to deliver for your clients. Mm -hmm. So for us, we simplified it a bit and introduced the IBM Consulting Advantage platform so that this way they can have access to all of those assistants while they do their everyday work. I love that you said that, you know, going forward, we're going to talk less about a Gen AI project and more just about what we do every day, helping our clients and customers transform their businesses, get value. And some of that is going to be powered by Gen AI. Absolutely. Have you seen it like, just in terms of the partnership itself and how IBM Consulting and AWS are working together? Any, any changes or impacts there? For this, we've really kind of focused our business on what we call the science of, you know, consulting, right? And it's around the four P's, makes it easier to remember, right? People, process, partnerships, and um, platform, right? So you hit on, if you briefly look at the people, that's making sure that they can have access to what they need to be able to be more productive. The process, everybody's running around trying to do, you know, POC purgatory, as I like to jokingly call it, until they can figure out what they want to do and not want to do. The partnership aspect, that's been absolutely key for us in terms of being able to scale, right? So I mentioned the IBM Consulting Advantage, which for us is the platform. Right. The reality is, is that you can access Amazon Q and, you know, all of the stuff that now AWS and Amazon are announcing, yeah. you know, left, yeah. right, and center um, around Gen AI for our practitioners to be able to deliver for our clients to make their lives easier. So it gave us that one platform, but still to be able to access all of the AWS technology. So we've invested heavily in training our resources on being able to use it, understand it, know when to call it, and yeah. you know, know when to use what pieces and everything to be able to deliver for our clients. That's great. This is what gets me super excited about the partnership, right? You know, a big part of our partnership is also helping our, our customers and clients move out of their data centers and modernize their applications and workloads. And I think one thing that's so exciting about Gen AI, in the past, there's always been this trade-off. You can lift and shift, then modernize. And if you modernize while you're migrating, it might extenuate at your timeframes or increase your costs. And I think now with, with Q, Transform, and Gen AI, we can have both. We can migrate and modernize simultaneously while keeping those timelines and costs really fixed like they used to be. And I'm just curious, like at what you're seeing with your clients with IBM in terms of how you're helping them apply Gen AI to those modernization journeys. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
look, if you're a CIO and you're going to put forward a 10-year roadmap to modernize, it's pretty much a kiss of death, right? I mean, so the reality is, is that Gen AI has allowed us to take a look across a number of technologies to be able to modernize them in a much faster period of time. You're talking now six to 12 to 18 months, right? No longer multi-year. What can I get done immediately? So that could be applied to mainframe modernization. It could be applied to VMware modernization. It could be applied to, as you mentioned, you know, I'm looking at these you know, big DCs and, you know, thinking it's like, okay, how a lot of our clients, how do I, you know, exit out of this data center in some kind of timely fashion that, you know, not going to carry on to the next generation. And even some things as simple as upgrading Java code for a client is happening in months and not years anymore. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're seeing the same thing. And we're really excited about just in the faster we can get our, our customers into the cloud, modernize, the sooner they'll be seeing the value as well. And I think also the return on investment for themselves, right? Because they're all looking at top line revenue growth and how do I take these dollars and reinvest it back into my business and not spending a fortune in dealing with this technical debt that's wrapped around my neck, yeah, right? Absolutely. So I, I think that's one of the big things that we can bring to bear for a lot of our joint clients. No, it's fantastic. So if you, you talk a little bit further about, um, about people, right? You mentioned the the four P's, and obviously IBM Consulting is very much a people business. And uh, at the end of the day, it's it's people working with your customers to get get things done. So touch on a little bit more about the skills and the training, and then even you know both the technical level and the executive level, and how you're how you're addressing that. So when we first started to embark on you know, the Gen AI journey and the training associated with it. We wanted to make sure everyone in the organization had some level of understanding. It's not just a, you know, like Amazon Q for development. It's not just the developers, right? Everybody needs to be basically have a fundamental understanding of the platforms, the various LLMs, you know, how to access different things, et cetera. So we laid out training that went from our managing partners, the very senior level of our organization, down to your entry level developer all the way through, right? Fortunately, we've used, you know, Gen AI to help customize that. We developed specific curriculums for each individual so that they know how to be able to have that conversation and deliver for their client. Simultaneously, we even started to customize that a bit. So last year, you know, right around this time, AWS announced, you know, their training for a lot of their partners and everything. So we took that and built it into the AWS Gen AI version of our training and deployed that. And now we're taking it a step further because AWS earlier this year announced even their first two Gen AI certifications right around July timeframe or so. Shocker, they were data-based, right? You know, I mean, so data seems to be the other common theme running around nowadays and how to, you know, use that with Gen AI. And so for us, we've invested heavily in terms of getting our people, you know, that sort of knowledge, whether it's to go deep and get certified Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. or even to just understand the general AI track and getting that AWS training to go along with that to be able to execute, right? And we've used Gen AI even internally to help streamline some of that and deploy it that much faster to our cool. personnel. Love that. And so you take our more general Gen AI technical training, but then especially as you apply it to the managing partners who have that deep domain expertise, industry expertise, they're able to contextualize it then for their their clients. It, absolutely. It's a 160,000 person organization. Right. So literally the plan was, how do you touch 160,000 yeah. people? It a wasn't- big challenge. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. wasn't just the developers or just the partners or just sales training. It was up and down the stack. Fantastic. So one thing, shifting a little bit to another P that you mentioned around process, and this is the process around um, value creation. And one thing that we're seeing certainly as we hopefully are moving away from the POC purgatory that that you rightly call out to real, and we saw, you know, like we're seeing increasing customers come out and talk about real value that they're deriving from generative AI. We're also seeing the conversation shift from just concerns around cost to true ROI conversations. Like what is going to be the business value driven based on my investment? I'm curious how IBM is helping your clients really think about that ROI um, and value um, calculator around Gen AI. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the the POCs, you can run a lot of them, but they've taught us a lot Mm -hmm. and they've taught our clients a lot in terms of even knowing what to ask for and what not to ask for, right? So when you look at the process aspect, 
that means taking the entire end-to-end value of what that ROI is supposed to look like for, for the client. It's not about, okay, did this work for this one spot? Yes or no? Yeah, it worked fantastic. It was, a, you know, great. I got the results I wanted, but it cost me a small fortune with the LLMs I'm using, right? So you want to factor that in. In fact, one of the jokes I'd heard before is, you know, LLMs could stand for losing lots of money if you do it wrong, right? right. So we want to make sure that we take that end-to-end approach, make sure that, yes, you get the results you want, but was it the most efficient way to be able to get there? And by the way, not everything needs to necessarily have the technology applied to it mm-hmm. too, right? So we're seeing pockets of that. If this works the way it's supposed to, or you're going to sunset that app, why are you going to go through and invest all of this, you know, sort of refactoring effort just to do that now? So it's trying to take that holistic approach across the board. And the POCs gave us a good foundational base for knowing how to look at that ROI for a client. At the same time, our clients learned off of what to ask for and not to ask for now for some of these POCs, right? I need to better understand, okay, what models do I really want to use? I need to better understand, you know, what platform do I access it through? So for example, Bedrock, you know, is anything. So um, that's what we're finding throughout, you know, in doing this full ROI evaluation for a lot of our clients. And our clients are asking us, when they retain a consultancy or an SI, they want an opinion, yeah. right? I mean, I, I want to see it work, but what do you think? What do you think it's going to land me and show me that roadmap over the next you know, 12 to 24 months? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we talk so much about selection and choice, because we're so early in this journey, and there's so many different things that we could be doing with this technology. So we want to make sure we have the right chips for your price performance, the right models based on the right use case. But with a lot of choice also comes a lot of choice. And so talking about the customers and, and the clients and, and you know, again, you, you all have very deep industry expertise as well. Just interested in kind of what you're seeing, how, how they're adopting Gen AI and working with IBM Consulting to really make it relevant for their businesses. So... Probably the most common use cases that we see are, um, you know, contact center intelligence, Mm, shocker, right? Um, uh, Image, um, document image processing and being able to summarize and that sort of thing. Application, migration, modernization, governance, security, right? If I really had to call out, Mm -hmm. those are the ones that we're seeing all over the place. And, you know, it's no surprise that everybody's announcements, you know, are all centered around those five. And you're seeing it span a number of industries, right? Everything from life sciences to healthcare to financial services to public. Um, You know, I thought, I didn't think the public sector would be so quick to jump on, but, you know, shocker, they are with everyone else to, you know, everybody's looking for try to get more efficient or do more with less, right? And telco and automotive. And so we're trying to make sure that now we take that approach that is industry specific, right? Um, We've always gone to market by industry. So you look at taking that Gen AI flavor and and putting that industry flavor on top of the Gen AI technical capability to be able to deliver for your clients, right? So taking those use cases then and applying those by industry to make sure that you can deliver. You know, a, a simple example is I mentioned public, we're working with a government agency and using Gen AI to help translate code into modern Java code, you know, essentially compared to manual hours at the speed of light. I mean, it's yeah. it's insane how much you can save by just doing that and running the checks in the background as opposed to having manual conversion of, you know, bringing them up to speed in that regard. So for them down the road, it becomes much more efficient. They get cost savings off of, you know, less hardware to be able to run it. Um, So, you know, it's a win-win, you know, not only in terms of speed of execution, but the long-term savings for them. That's a great example of a low-hanging fruit to show immediate value. I mean, so Amazon itself has saved, I think it's 4,500 developer years by upgrading all of its Java applications to Java 17. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what you're going to see more and more of, I think, as you go forward, right? Yeah. So Mahmoud, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really excited by you know the progress and, and the potential of our partnership with IBM Consulting. Super clear already that we're delivering some big results around Gen AI for our joint customers. So again, thank you very much and uh, really looking forward to what we do in 2025 together. Absolutely, thank you for having me and I'm excited about the future as well. Mm-hmm.